In this video, I'm going to talk about how to complete the lab assignment. This is typically the most challenging portion of the course for you to comprehend. This is a lab science class, so there's a lecture portion, which I previously described, and a lab portion. You're going to be doing the lab portion at home. So where to start? You're going to go down to where it says lab resources, and you're going to find what is called the lab exercise. This is kind of our version of a lab manual. So you're going to open that document. And that may take a minute, so I'm going to open another screen. And each lab exercise will have the same format. It will have the title, the lab numbers, this is lab one, and then it will have what we call study guides for the lesson quiz. So the lesson quiz should only be completed after you've studied the lecture portion of the course and the lab portion of the course. So each lecture quiz has 10 lab questions and 10 lecture questions. So these are not going to be submitted as far as these questions. It looks like I need to finish this number six, um, but you should use them for study purposes. So just like you had the learning objectives for the lesson, the lecture, here are the ones for the lab. So we're gonna scroll down, and at the beginning of each lab exercise, you're gonna see these yellow boxes. And they're, again, gonna look very similar from week to week or lesson to lesson. Each lab should have four photos that are due, and this is the list of what is required for each photo. And it's gonna vary from photo to photo. So make sure that you really are reading these carefully. So for example, photo one must include your name and the date and your answers to the lab policy questions one through 10. Photo two, we're gonna require a selfie. So usually there's one selfie per lab. And so that's a selfie with your entire face, your whole face, your name and the date and the completed lab kit inventory checklist and the lab kit itself open. So if you haven't bought a lab kit, you know, go do that ASAP. The only place to buy the lab kit is from the ICC bookstore and they're 30 to $40 per lab kit. Photo three is the safety contract, which we'll go through each of these individually. And then lab four is um, some questions regarding the scientific method. So we want one document with all four photos in the document. So there's another tutorial that is not included in this orientation, but it is in the how-to video um, list. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to get all the photos into one PDF, then watch that document. The best and easiest way to do that is a website that is free called www.ilovepdf.com. You don't need to register. You don't need to do anything besides type that in and it will let you merge your photos into one document. So that way I don't have to click on four individual photos. And remember that photos are required. This is going to allow me to know that you're attending, in quotes, um, the lab portion of the course. So in the face-to-face -face course of the lab, we require attendance, we require students to be there the entire time, and we do a lab manual check. So this is the same thing. We're just checking to make sure that you're progressing through the actual lab. So if photos aren't submitted, then your lesson quiz score becomes a zero. So if you did that quiz and you got you know, a 19 out of 20, but you didn't do your photos, we would reduce that score to a zero. So it's really important for participation and attendance that you are doing the lab photos. All right, so this lab, and many of the labs require the lab kit. So again, go to the ICC bookstore and purchase that. And for this lab, the only thing you need it for is inventory. So we just wanna make sure that you have all the parts that you need. So that way, the following week, you will have the materials to the actual lab. All right, so let's scroll through here. And again, this is pretty standard. Um, we're gonna have instructions at the beginning of each lab. So it says, before you begin the lab activity, carefully read all of the instructions of the lab exercise, which is what this is. Complete the virtual lab, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, read all the parts, so make sure that you read everything. And make sure that you submit the correct photos. You are not 
submitting this entire document. This is a 19 page document. That's not what I want. I need four photos, which you will see as we progress through here. Then if you have any questions, let me know, email me. Um, we, I can meet you during my office hours, whatever works for you. And use this document as you fill it in to study for the quiz. So this is just a reminder that each quiz has 20 questions, 10 of which are from the lab portion of the course and 10 of which are from the lecture portion. So if for whatever reason you are repeating this course, you've taken in the past, you will get, need to get a new lab kit every single semester because it has supplies that need to be re replenished, etc. So if you're taking this again, a new lab kit is required. So I am going to, which normally I don't, just hit some highlights on some of the main lab policies. So that way you're really clear on how this course works and there's no confusion. So lab attendance is taken by submitting your photos, and I'm gonna kind of paraphrase. Um, each lab requires four photos, and you're gonna put those four photos into one PDF file. And again, the best way to do that is to merge them using www.ilovepdf.com, and that's in this document. Then you're gonna submit your photos on Canvas, which I will show you how to do that and where to do that in a little bit later. And it's one point per photo. So if you forget a photo, you would get you know three out of four. However, if you start forgetting many photos, that would count as a zero for the photos and then your lesson quiz. So that can add up pretty quickly. So make sure you're submitting those lab photos. And so this kind of talks about right here what happens if they're not submitted. So if you don't submit any photos, that counts as an absence. And so this statement in bold and highlighted is really important. If a student fails to submit the required lab photos for more than three lessons, so there's three different lab sets of photos you didn't do. So lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, etc. Then you'll receive a failing grade in the course. That's the lecture in the lab. It doesn't have to be in order. So you could miss lab two photos, lab seven, lab 12, et cetera. And it's really important that those are being submitted because that's the same policy if you were attending in person for the lab. If a student misses more than four, we give them an F or give them the option to drop the course. So I do provide feedback on those photos. So if you're doing them right, I do a lot of like great job, little happy faces. If you're struggling a little bit, missing components, etc. I will provide feedback on how to do this and make sure that you are kind of getting on track. You get two warnings of incorrect photo submissions. So that can be for a variety of things. You're missing components of a photo. Maybe the images are backwards, like mirror images are upside down. All of those are, you know, small little deductions that I will take off based on kind of what you're submitting. So if you forgot your name or you forgot the date, we want the name and the date so that we know who you are and that you did it for this particular semester. And at the beginning, as I mentioned, it's a list of what's required for each photo and it's in this document. If for whatever your reason you're working with, you know, a friend or somebody that you know, and you're both doing this course at the same time, that is fine. However, you each need to buy your own lab kits. That's two lab kits, one per person. You need to do your own experiments and submit your own photos. So you can't just do one experiment and take photos twice, one with you and one with your neighbor in the photo. So everybody needs to do their own work. If you don't, that's considered cheating and you will both get a zero for the lesson quiz and the photos. And this, this is a repeat offense, meaning if you do it more than once, then that's considered academic misconduct and that may require a student of concern form and you could fail the course. So just make sure you're doing your own work. Okay, so how do we make sure that we're doing these photos correctly? So here are some things that we need. You need, depending on what we require, um, and again, every photo is different, so make sure you read. If any of these parts are missing, then you're going to have points deducted for each individual photo. So if it requires your name and the date and you forgot it, 
then I will take off points. If it requires a selfie, which is your entire face, I will take off points. I'm the only one that's going to see these, so, you know, I don't care what you look like. If, you know, you're in your pajamas and your hair's, you know, in a ponytail, who cares? It doesn't matter. I'm the only one that's looking at these photos. If I can't see your experiment results clearly, that would be a deduction. It may even be a zero because I need to see the results. If it's not in a compatible document, <clears throat> meaning I can't open the document, it needs to be a PDF file, then that would result. So if I can't open it, I usually will send you an email first that says, can you please submit? And if you don't resubmit, then that would be a zero. If the image is not clear or easily to read, so some of these, it's up to you. You can either handwrite them or you can type in your answers. But if I can't read your answers, then again, that's a zero. And no mirror images. So you may need to adjust settings on your, usually it's a camera phone that you're using. So just make sure you flipped it the right way so that I'm not seeing a mirror image. I can't read backwards words. So here is that hint of that um, ilovepdf.com of how to merge multiple photos. That just kind of is a reminder. And you're going to upload all of these photos onto Canvas, which again, I will actually, maybe I'll just show you that right now. All right, so you're going to find the location on Canvas. It's usually going to have the Friday heading above here, but this is the first week, which is not due till Sunday. So you're going to find the heading that says Lab Photos with the due date. You're going to click on the link in Canvas. And then there's usually a rubric. So I need to add to this rubric. Um, there's going to, this one's going to be worth four points, but this is going to walk you through, and it's going to be exactly the same as what's on that cover sheet of the lab exercise. So... You know, the rubric is what I use to grade it, and it will tell you, like, what's missing or what you did wrong, etc. So this one, I, I need to add to it, but this is what I'll use to grade it. So you're going to upload your photo. Okay, so this is a better view of what you're going to see when you um, click on that photo link. So it has the due date, the number of points. Here's an overview. I provide those tips again in case you've forgotten um, that I love pdf.com. I even walk you through if you're somebody that likes Google, you can do whatever you want as long as I can get it in the correct um, format. So if you convert from a Google Doc to a PDF, I give you the instructions how to do that. And make sure you're reading the feedback that I provide in the grade book. So that way you know if you're doing things correctly. And this should actually be four. So we've we've been a little bit more generous here lately. So if a student misses more than four of the required photos, then they will fail the course. And then there's that rubric. So how would you actually do this assignment? You're like, okay, I got my photos, now what? So you're gonna click Start Assignment, and then you're just gonna find your file. It's super easy. So you would choose your file from wherever you have it hanging out. So I'll just pick this cute little picture, and you click Open. Oh, it's not, I don't allow JPEGs. Okay, let me try again. Um, let me pick one that is a PDF and then you just click submit. So pretty easy. Start assignment, choose your file, click submit. And if you were like, oops, I forgot something or I didn't do it right the first time, you click on new attempt, you do it again, same process, no big deal. So that's how you submit your photos. So let's go back to the lab exercise. So here are just some highlights. This talks about the lab kit, which I've actually already talked about this. So you will need it. Um, lab one for inventory, once the box has been opened, you cannot take it back to the bookstore. So um, they won't return it once it's been opened. There's a seal, so once that seal has been broken. So we won't start using it for experiments until lab two. So then it talks about how some labs you're gonna need a few extra supplies to purchase. That is specifically um, lab three, which is lesson three. Um, that you'll need a few supplies. So I'll remind you of that. Lab two, you will also need some fruit, but pretty much whatever you have on hand you can use. So you might wanna look at lab two um, a little bit ahead of time also, but you need to go purchase anything unless you just don't have any fruit in the house at all. So as we scroll through here, I've actually talked about most of this. Um, the virtual labs are recommended to be done before you attempt the actual lab exercise, which is what this is. So that way you kind of have a preview. Some of them are going to be very different. Some are going to be very similar. It just kind of depends on the lab. And this talks about the quizzes, which I've already done. Um, 
10 questions, 10 points. I'm sorry, 20 questions, 20 minutes, 20 points. And you are not allowed any resources during the quiz, and it does use Proctorio. Okay, so now let's get into one of those photos. So I'm gonna scroll down. So if I scroll down and it's, I see that yellow box again, it's the exact same thing on that front page. It says photo one includes your name and the date and your answers to the lab policy questions one through 10. So you have a lot of options. Option one, you say, I don't have a printer. That's fine. So right here in this column, this is answers. You're gonna type in your answers in a color, preferably red so I can see them nice and clear. So you can just type in. So how do you show that you're attending lab in biology 110? You're gonna say submit photos. Easy peasy. I highlight that, I make it red. Great, okay. You're gonna keep answering all 10 of those questions. You can put your name right here. You can put the date right there. And then what? You're like, okay, so I have that, but how do I make it a photo? So you have a couple options. You could cut and paste this into a new, like a Word document. Just cut and paste this page. So it's literally select all, okay, cut and paste. That's one option. And you could save that document and put all four photos in there. Another option is you could take a screenshot of this, okay? Just make sure I can see all of it. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just so that we see the whole page. So you gotta get the whole page in there. But you could do that. So there's the whole page. I don't care about the instructions. I care about the name and the date, but um, or you could take multiple photos if that's need necessary too. All right, if you don't wanna do that option, you're like, well, I have a printer. I just wanna print it. That's, that's a good option. So you could print just this page and then write in your answers. Okay, that's fine. They just need to be legible. And all of your answers, again, go on this column. So even if it's true, false, put all your answers in this column. Um, you could also just take a photo, as long as I can see it, of the actual screen. Now, sometimes when you take a picture of the computer screen, it's kind of blurry. So just make sure, again, that it's a very legible, clear photo. Or if you're working on some kind of, you know, device that works well, you, you know, fancy digital pen, you can write your answers in that way. That's also fine. So this is photo one. So we're gonna, I would just do the part where I type it in and cut and paste this page into a new document. That's photo one. So let's keep going. Here's the lab inventory kit. So our lab kit inventory. So we're gonna keep going. There's a bunch of instructions there, but you can read. So for this page, you're gonna take that lab kit that you bought from the ICC bookstore Again, put your name and the date, so already right, right there, ready for you to go. And then you're just gonna put a check mark. And you can put a little X if you wanna do that, if you're doing it on the computer, I don't care. And anything that is not there, you're gonna, excuse me, you're going to put a little X on missing or replaced and make sure the right number is there. So if it says 10 index cards, make sure you have 10. If it says eight small test tubes, make sure they're not broken and make sure you have eight small test tubes. If anything is missing or broken, Email me your name, which is up here. Sorry, I'm going to scroll a little bit. Your name first and last, your student ID, your home address, where we're going to mail you the supplies. If it's a short turnaround time-wise, we may ask you to come to campus, but typically we don't do that. And then the name and the number of what's missing and how many that you actually need. So you're going to put a checklist or a check mark by all the ones. Hopefully they're all there. And then we're going to keep scrolling. This is a two pager, so you may need to take two photos to get credit for this one um, photo too. So then with this page, okay, you got this page, and your lab kit open, you're gonna take a selfie. So selfie with you with your lab kit open. So that way we know you have a lab kit and the inventory, you've done both. So that's photo two, so let's keep going. So then we get into lab safety, so it's really important whether you're doing things in person or you're doing them at home, that you are using all the safety protocol. So you're gonna watch this video and then you're gonna answer true or false to each of these questions. Now what you're gonna notice is there is not a lab photo over this. So you still need to do it because these could be questions on the lab quiz, but this is not a required photo. So that you're doing this for study purposes. So we don't actually want this page. So we are not taking pictures of every single page. So let's keep going. 
Then we have what's called the safety contract. So we're gonna keep scrolling. So now what you're going to do on the safety contract is you're going to initial next to the line. So, you know, whatever, however you wanna do that. You're gonna write your name here all the way down. And then you're going to date, and again, you can, if you don't have a digital pen and if you don't wanna print it, so either you can print it or you can do it right here, you can just, you know, sign it with your computer and then put your student ID. You're then going to, again, either take a screenshot or cut and paste. We could cut that and paste that right into that document with our first photo. And that's photo number three. Photo number two can also be cut and pasted into that document. All right, so let's keep going. Then we get into the scientific method. So we have you do some things. You read, read, read on the scientific method, which we'll do in lecture and in lab. And then you're going to, again, answer some questions, watch a little video, and that's your other photo. So when you're all done, when you're all done, you'll see a little checklist. But again, here's another page or so that I want you to do it, but it is not a lab photo. So do it so you study for the quiz. So this is your document for studying for the quiz, but you don't have to actually photograph it. So here's that checklist, and this is going to be the same for each week. So did you submit your photos? So we merged all those photos into one document, and we're going to save them as a PDF and submit them to Canvas. Did you do the virtual lab, which we'll get to next? Did you review the study guide questions? So that way you are smart for the lecture and lab quiz. It's one quiz. That's what we call a lesson quiz. So did you study all those questions? And then go and take your quiz. So this is where the lab information is coming from. And again, each week will be a little bit different. All right, sorry, two more quick things, and then we're going to wrap up this. So one is the virtual lab. I actually recommend that you do that before you do the lab exercise. So you would click on, and again, all the lab stuff is due on Fridays except for the first week. So you click on the link. It will redirect you to connect. So here is a virtual lab. So they are untimed. Um, and you have unlimited attempts. They are three points, and there's one per lesson. So every week or every lesson, you're going to have a virtual lab and lab photos with the lab exercise. So we're going to click begin, and they're going to vary from week to week. I'm just going to show you a little part of one. So you should read all this front page first. So if there's a video which this one has, you should watch this little 25 second video and this little list of before you begin. So it's gonna ask you a series of questions. These usually take anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes. In the face-to-face -face lab, they're there almost two hours. So, you know, this is just kind of rounding out your lab experience as far as the um, lab exercise and the virtual lab. So you click laboratory simulation, so click to continue in the bottom right corner, and then you would answer some questions. So you would answer the questions once you do that. And you're just going to continue. You're going to see um, the little check marks. And then once you've got all the check marks correct, you would click go to phase two until you get all the way in the bottom right corner to phase five. So you're just going to work your way through that. And you'll know when you're done because it'll tell you that you've completed it. So that's how you complete the virtual labs. So last but not least, so now it's time to prove that you learned lots of information in this lesson. So you're going to have studied, you're gonna be in a quiet place, no resources, no distractions, good internet, etc. You're gonna click on the quiz and it will redirect you and it, you're gonna click begin. Now, I don't have the Chrome and Edge browser loaded right this moment, but you would Click on that. Ignore the form of payment because you don't you don't need a form of payment. You do need a webcam with a working audio or microphone. You've got 12 minutes to take the quiz, which is actually not correct. Sorry. You're going to have 20 minutes to take the quiz. This is a different quiz. You're going to have 20 minutes to take the quiz, and it's 20 questions. So you would click begin, and you're going to answer all the questions. Once you're done with the quiz, you're going to click submit, and that will cover the information from the lecture and lab. And that is the end of lesson one. And then you're going to do that every week, lecture lab material, 
And it sounds a little daunting, but it's not as bad once you kind of get into the groove. It usually takes several lessons to kind of get down the routine. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.